All right, members, it is August 14th. This is the weekly review where we take a look at what happened, what we expect to happen, and try to uh, consider how we're going to try to position for whatever it is that's coming. Last week, pretty flat, right? Really didn't do anything. Still up nicely on the year now. And, uh, you know, still looking like the same thing. Now, there is the possibility of one problem, you know, starting to crop up. Now, you know, we haven't talked about any kind of problems because there haven't been any. But, uh, you know, if, if we look at this one case, right, there is the possibility of something on the uh, horizon here that could cause a problem. So let's look at that case together. It has to do with the S&P 500. And what that case is, is the um, potential for a, uh, a setback, right, that could drive us lower. And the way those setbacks happen is, is you get swing point lows that start to form. And they're close enough to the current price, which this is, to where if price did start down, right, and were to break both of these swing point lows, we could get a faster move back down into this area. And so that's a potential little wart that's out there that, you know, is something that we need to be aware of. Should we be worried about it? I don't think so yet. Now, if we start creeping back down and get underneath this bar, then we should start to worry about it, and especially if we can't hold a retest region if we were to come back and do another one on this swing point high. If we couldn't hold that retest region area, then we should probably begin to worry about this a little bit more. Right now, I don't think it's there, but again, it's something uh, to take a look at. If you look at this longer term, though, you know, there's nothing wrong with what we're seeing. I mean, everything still looks good. This thing legged up, it tried to pull back, it got bought, a little doji, but it's still hanging up there. So I don't think it's a huge problem, but I do think it's something to have on your radar. If we look a little bit farther right, all the other things still look positive. You know, you, you had the pressure on Friday, and let's go back to that uh, S&P chart. You had the pressure on Friday that tried to pull this back intraday right off the bat, and that was off the retail sales numbers. And it just couldn't do it, right? As soon as it creeps down, right, by the end of the day, the buyers start coming back in. And as long as you see end-of-day buying, then you really shouldn't get too worried about this market. So, so far, everything still looks the same to me. I don't see any bad news. As a matter of fact, any bad news I see looks like good news, right? Because right now, everything's treated as good news. If we look elsewhere, right, NASDAQ, NDX, they're doing what they're supposed to. So let's, let's look at the NASDAQ first. You know, the NASDAQ continues to push up, right? And if we look at it on the weekly time frame, the NASDAQ continues to push up there too. So everything you want to happen is happening. 51.55 was that prior high, now we're at 52. Uh, everything you want is still taking place. If you look at the uh, more concentrated NDX, same story there, no give up, just continuing higher. And so I can't find anything here that worries me uh, greatly. There's just that one little area that might be a problem, just something to keep our eyes on. But right now, you know, it's full steam ahead. Those higher swing points, so the ABCD targets are out there. Uh, the uh, new highs were made on all the indexes last week. It's pretty hard to be negative about anything out here. The other thing is that if you look under the covers, there's some huge moves taking place on a daily basis. And over in the TNT room, I see that they're trading these things. And, and that's cool, right? I mean, if, if you're into that sort of trading, you want to make those kinds of trades, uh, you certainly can do it. So, you know, I'll, I'll just pop up a couple of these and just show you the kinds of numbers that we're talking about. The first one here is a little biotech, and you can see just a huge move. And so, you know, as you start breaking right here over swing point highs. Those are potential areas that one could enter. If you look at it on the weekly, it was the same thing happening on the weekly. And so when you see that sort of action taking place intraday, you know, they just squeeze the hell out of it and just keep it going. And that's exactly what they did here. Uh, another example, a little bit less robust, but still big was ACIA. There was a question I was kind of monitoring the room um, Friday myself, uh, Jim was out. And uh, as I looked at this, there was an intraday buy. I believe it was around 87, if I remember right. You know, you, you could have got another 10-point move if you were able to buy into that. Um, again, 
a lot of robust action happening place, you know, happening underneath the covers here. And even these large cap stocks, like I, I pointed out BABA as a potential play that we bought into, if you're watching my, tea, my uh, trading room, you know, we bought into it back here, we added on this breakout and then just got the huge burst higher. Folks, people want to put their money into these things. You can see, I mean, this is institutions coming over, you know, hand over fist to get into this thing. And they're not going to stop. And as long as this market's positive, they're going to keep chasing things. And so, you know, if you're doing anything, you know, you should be looking for the potential set, out, set up for these kinds of big breakouts because that's where the money is right now. On the positive technical picture, there's a dearth, you know, it's a positive technical picture and there's a dearth of news. There's an old saying, you know, when the cat's away, the mice will play. And right now they're playing. They're playing hard. And there's no cats in sight. And uh, until we get setbacks, right, that come in and slap the hands of these people playing these kinds of plays, right, they're going to keep doing it. They always do. They will continue to do it. They've, they've done it in the past. They'll do it in the future. The bad data, like the retail number, they just buy it, right? Next week, the data remains minor, and there's just not much out there, and the market's likely just going to drift higher again uh, as a result. Bottom line is exactly the same as it was last week. Absolutely nothing has changed. If it's two weeks in a row, I haven't changed it. What's the best term short trade? That Bob is still a good trade. There's a 20% move left in that trade. If you haven't looked at it, go over to my room, check it out. All right? See, see what I've, I've done a couple videos already. Um, I've uh, talked about it in the room, so go check it out. That's, I think that's your best short-term trade now. Um, you know, my, in, unless you're day trading these these wild ones, right? That's a big cap. It's a swing trade, right? I, maybe I should put, when I say shorter term, I'm talking about swing trades. Uh, the longer term, I think that dollar still. I mean, I, I want to show you this dollar again. And the reason for that is they cannot bring this dollar down. You get bad news and this dollar just bounces right back up. And that's because the expectation, rightly so probably, is that the rest of the world is going to continue to lower rates and we're just going to sit there at worst. And that's going to push the dollar higher. Here's that bad retail number. You can see it gapped down. And what did they do? They just came in there immediately on the gap and just started grinding it higher all day long. So when you look at this, right, the dollar is a good long-term trade. It's going to try to trade back up. And if we pull it back and look at it on the weekly, it's just going to try, you know, we've got that two ranges I pointed out before. And I'll throw them up here again right quick. You know, you got these two ranges, and it's going to try to make it up over that range again and get in this top one. So, you know, if you're looking for a place long-term, that's not going to have a huge move, but can give you a good percentage gain, and you've got some extra cash that you want to work into something that's fairly safe, I think this is a pretty safe bet that you're going to make some money on it over the long term. Uh, fundamentals, you can go look at those. Long-term themes, you know, everything is happening pretty much except for that one long-term thing I had about the 70s. That looks pretty much dead. Uh, I guess I'll leave it up there a little bit longer, but I don't see how it's going to play out at this point. Um, that's it for this week. You know, if I'm looking at next week, I'm thinking about what's happening. You know, until we see some failures, you just got to think there's a grind higher. And right now, that's what's taking place. Take advantage of it uh, while it continues to offer. See you. Bye.